Hey everyone, Steven here again with another tutorial. Uh, actually, this will be just a overview for those of you sort of just jumping into Nano Studio 2 and wanting to come to grips with Obsidian, the synth and sampler combination, sort of the heart of Nano Studio 2. Once you get to understand Obsidian, there's really nothing you can't do. pretty thick sound, which I have to say is uh, one of the great joys of working with Obsidian. So we're not actually going to look at any sound design uh, techniques or anything like that in this video. It's really going to be about just wrapping our heads around many different moving parts of Obsidian as quickly as possible, leaving for future videos how to sort of get into the guts of it. And so at the top level, we have the performance section, which is where you can set up your macros. Uh, basically, it's a way to control a multitude of performance and modulation uh, controls from one place. And the patch section, sort of self-explanatory, is where you have all your patches and you can browse them and it's all tagged uh, so you can sort of keep it all nicely organized. And the actual guts of Obsidian where you are going to spend most of your time is in its edit editor panel. And you see it's basically split up into four main quadrants. You have three oscillators in, in the oscillator section for each Obsidian instance. Uh, and for each oscillator you have six, seven different oscillator types, including the sampler. And, and over here you have the, the filter section. In this case we have a combination L and R filter, which is basically, this is a stereo setup. All right, so I'll explain this more in a second, but uh, basically this will be your filter section where you can determine your, your filters or filter, low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, EQ, formant, comb, wave shape, which is basically distortion or bit crushing, whatever you want it to be. And you also have a global filter, which I'll sort of touch on as well, the sort of the special case difference with it. And here in these two other quadrants are basically the sound shaping sections. This is where you have your envelopes. You have five different envelopes to choose from. Each one can have its own unique parameters. And once again, we'll look at those in a moment. And we also have the LFO uh, sound shaping options here. We have five as well. And moving down to the mod effects section, this is where you can sort of, you can set up and store your modulation setups, how everything is sort of routed in the, to create the sound. And to the right are the effects that are applied directly at the synthesizer level. This is something that will be baked into the, the synth patch, so it's helpful to have that as, available as well as an option. So moving back up to the editor panel, one of the first things you'll probably determine is whether you want to control the sound coming out of Obsidian as a separation of left channel and right channel. So if you have a stereo sample, for example, good chance you'll want to have a stereo setup with the routing. Uh, if you have a monophonic synth sound and you want to keep it really beefy, but maybe have a pseudo stereo, you can still go stereo, and there's a good reason for that in some cases, but you can also just uh, choose series, in which case you can have uh, filter one and filter two, see it magically unlinks the two left and R, uh, L and R filter channels and creates two separate uh, filter channels which you can apply in a variety of different ways to your sound. And in series, basically, as you can see with this visual indicator here, uh, your oscillators will go through filter one and then filter two as in a series. Whereas if you choose parallel, uh, you can sort of split your oscillators up, you know, or you can even add a com have a combination of uh, oscillator one, two, and three going in different amounts to one filter rather than the other. This is made a lot more obvious when you see over here with say, in this case, the oscillator one, uh, it's all of its signals being sent to filter one right now. Um, and if say we had a band pass in filter two, then if we put it in the middle, then half its signal is being sent to filter one and half and being low passed because that's what it is, and half its signal is being sent to filter two, which is applying a bandpass filter. One other note with this routing setup is oscillator one has a special property where it can actually bypass the filters entirely and uh, be routed directly to the amp stage or even pass the amp to the global filter. Uh, the most common use that I found for this is when you want, oh, I don't know, let's say you want to preserve a bass sound of a, of a synth and you're routing it 
through a bunch of distortion, weird effects, bandpass, comb filter, stuff that can sometimes wreak havoc with the bass end. You can instead bypass the filter section doing applying those effects and uh, preserve that low end with, say, a sine wave or something very rich in bass character. And there's actually uh, always a, depending on how you look at it, either a second or a third filter option. Uh, the global filter, which is a little bit different from the other filters. It's basically got the same properties, all these different filter type setups. The main difference with the global filter is that it's applied, as the name suggests, at the global level. So if you hold down 16 notes, all 16 notes, because it's 60 note polyphony max, if you would like it to be, uh, it will be applied equally to all the notes, right? It's almost like a track level effect at that point. Uh, whereas these filters are applied at the note level. So each note can have its own unique filtering. So yeah, so yeah I'll quickly uh, go back to the oscillator section because I know that's where probably most people's interest lies. And we'll look at the different oscillator types really quickly. Analog is sort of your all-purpose, uh, classic, well, analog synthesizer styled oscillator. And uh, you have your basic waveform setups, pulse width modulation. You have sync. Uh, controls here if you want to get that kind of sound. You have Wavetable, which has sort of a wide variety of different waveform cycles. The way I think of Wavetable is almost like how I think of an Excel spreadsheet. It's just like each cell has a slightly different uh, waveform cycle, and by modulating or shifting from one cell to another, you can create a very unique sound effect. This is something that maybe a lot of you will recall with the old school synthesizers like the uh, Korg Wave Station. It basically is based off of wavetable synthesis. So you have this option as well. Very interesting, especially for soundscapes. You have phase distortion, another classic sort of analog synthesis method. You have the uh, sort of like the big beast of Obsidian, the FM oscillator, which is definitely deserving of its own tutorial video in its own right. This is probably where we're going to create probably the most biggest, expansive, and wild sounds using just pure synthesis. It's really quite a, a treat to work with. You got Nano Saw, which is basically like a very lightweight way of producing a very rich analog signal, which you can detune and spread into the stereo field very easily. It's got some good noise to it, so you can filter that, you can low pass filter that and get a very beefy synth sound just from that alone. Uh, kind of reminds me of the old Juno synth range. So you can create a lot of great old classic analog synth sounds with this one alone. You got a noise oscillator, which is actually has quite a few settings here, which I'm not going to look into, but uh, there's a lot of different noise options useful for a variety of different things. And of course, a sample oscillator, which just like the FM definitely deserves its own tutorial video. All right, and most of you will be familiar with envelope setups. Once again, there's five envelopes. You can route them. Well, we'll get into routing in a second, but you can probably get a sense of it right away that you can route it pretty much anywhere. As with a lot of synthesis setups, you're going to most commonly work with a filter ENV, an envelope which basically just routes to a filter. And so one is already pre-set up and called filter ENV, but you can route it anywhere. You don't have to go to filter. Uh, as just to show you right now, I can just take its mod destination. Right now it's set to modulate the filter cutoff here, actually filter one and two, both of these, uh, which, whatever, to make it a little bit make more sense, I'll just go back to stereo. And I'm gonna remove that and I can, I can assign it, as you can see, to pretty much any control that you see here. I mean, it's, I mean, it's practically limitless. Uh, you know, you can route to a lot more than you even see based on the sort of quick icon routing that you just saw here that was highlighted where you can route to these available controls. So right now, this filter EMV, so-called filter, uh, is actually being routed to oscillator threes, uh, which is an FM type oscillator, uh, operator two frequency, right? So who knows what that will sound like? Maybe not anything good, but uh, just like what you could say about an envelope, you could say about uh, an LFO. You can route it to wherever you want and you know have very complex routing setups. Before I move on I should probably also note that each one of these controls for the, uh, the envelope has a, um, a curve control 
basically. The release and the decay here. Uh, and you can change the envelope type. Most of the time it's gonna be attack, decay, sustain, release, uh, ADSR, or uh, you also have bipolar variant uh, where you can sort of do this sort of funky thing like this and change the curves and get some really interesting envelopes going. Or just a regular attack decay envelope, which is very common for percussive elements uh, like drums and so on. And very quickly, without going too into detail, you'll also notice the, uh, other than the envelope curve, as it's being called here in this section, you also have scaling, which is where you can, uh, so here you can just determine the velocity sensitivity of this one envelope effect, if you will, uh, just with this one knob right here. And you can control the effect across the keyboard range with, with this here. May not be obvious right away how this is useful. It's very useful. Uh, right away, I'll just mention this with filtering uh, samples. Um, sometimes when you have a very uh, grainy sounding sample, particularly if you're using not too many samples, especially on the low end range, you can filter it down very easily just like that and preserve the bass and it won't have that you know, grainy sound on the low end or conversely on the high end, if it's too shrill, you can uh, sort of taper it down that way. You have the same types of controls, velocity sensitivity and key scaling, which affects the time uh, of the envelope. So in other words, the speed of it. So right here, this will this envelope will occur over uh, about a, well, 2.8 seconds plus 1.4 seconds, uh, 4.2 second time span, basically how long that envelope will take to complete. And if you use this, uh, key scaling or velocity scaling, you can modify that so that, see here, plus minus, this will decrease the time. At this point, I'm basically decreasing the time by about half, half of that time that I mentioned here, which is what, 4.2 seconds, and now this will be about two seconds at this uh, higher range. So this can also replicate a lot of interesting um, real world effects with sampled instruments, but whatever, tons of creative uses you can do as well. So these sort of baked in modulation options in the scaling section here uh, could be done the old fashioned way as, as well as what I showed you earlier where you can edit the mod destination uh, from the uh, envelope itself. The old fashioned way would be just to go here into the mod section where let's just find the one that we set up here, filter ENV goes to oscillator 3 FM. There we go, it's right here. So you can sort of manage it here. You don't have to set it up directly. This is just a nice, quick, and easy way to do it from the editor panel. But you can uh, modify it all here and keep track of everything uh, and have a lot more options. You will, we have two more. We've stacked quite a few modulations here. So um, you have LFO uh, or envelope, which um, again are very similar. So when you select one or the other, you'll see with the destination options, you have a tremendous amount of destination options. This is basically all these different control points, some of them which are not reachable from the editor, although most of them are. The effects section should be pretty self-explanatory. You can, by the way, route anything to the effects section as well. Uh, but remember, these are also on the global level, just like the global filter. So uh, they, whatever you modulate at this level will be applied to all notes equally not individually. So that could have interesting effects, but you might want to also watch out for that. But basically what's worth noting with the effects section is you have your chorus, your delay, your reverb. You have several different reverb types, which are, they sort of form the, the base reverb algorithm, but the controls will remain the same. Same thing with the delay. You have like ping pong delay, stereo delay, Again, just a slight different or a significantly different algorithm underlying it, but same controls. You can use seconds or beats here. By the way, this also is the case with the LFO. You can sync it to uh, either Hertz or by beats. Very useful. And you've got in your multi-effects section here, choice of chorus, ensemble, flange, phaser, and so on. And you can also, although I often forget about this, you can actually determine which order these effects are applied by tapping and holding and dragging, like that. I'll just quickly finish off 
again, this was just an overview, and I didn't want to get too over long with this. Uh, maybe it's already getting a little long. Uh, just quickly look at the LFO options. And you could determine the level that the LFO is applying to, its uh, control that it's being sent to, uh, its rate, as we just looked at. You can modify how quickly it occurs and ramp it up with the attack. Um, you can change the LFO considerably, even from the base sign, just by using the curve and warp characteristics or even quantize to get a more stepped setup, which could be useful for all sorts of step type sequences that you want to create. And before we move away from that, I'll just show you all these different options. One of the most interesting to me is the FM option, which I'll remove the quantize, and you'll notice that curve and warp have a much more dramatic effect on the waveform being created. And the other part here that you'll be interested in is the, uh, the way that it routes its signal. The LFO right now is at bipolar, which basically whatever control it's routing to, it will apply 100% of its effect both on a negative and a positive value plane. That's how I think of it. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but uh, the way to think of it, probably the best way to explain it, is with here we got in the, fil in the filter, a, the cutoff is at the midway point. So now when I set the LFO to bipolar, and is it at 100%? Well, I haven't even added, let's just for the sake of argument, add it to the cutoff. So it will be at 100% going to that filter cutoff. It will now modulate that filter bipolar, negative and positive. Whereas if it's unifull will mean that if you set this cutoff all the way to the bottom, it will go from zero to 100, basically, the values at that control, right? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I think that's a pretty good overview, maybe a little bit longer than we planned for uh, in looking at Obsidian, but Obsidian really is a beast. We'll be looking at it a lot more deeply in uh, future videos. But for now, I hope this overview gave you a little bit more clarity so you can get started uh, working with Obsidian right away.